Hey guys, I'm literally like one step away from going to bed, and I take a look at YouTube, and someone straight asks a very poignant question. Uh, this one's for you, Beer Drinker 86 Love the name, bud. Love the name. Um, okay, Beer Drinker 86 you asked, is investing in the stock market wrong? Or is it wrong to invest in the stock market? Um, boy, is that a dense and complex question. <laughs> the stock market is the way that the capitalists exchange the value of their companies amongst each other. Uh, laborers don't have stocks. They don't have shares. Not really. Uh, if they do, it's such a pithy, small amount that to attempt to pretend as though they actually have a stake in the stock market is uh i i just think you got to be delusional to make that kind of statement or proclamation so what the stock market is is it is the way that the capitalists uh exchange value amongst one another in effect what is effectively gambling they are effectively putting money on the table in order to say to speculate on the possibility and the potential that their investment will pay out later on down the line. Uh, buy low, sell high, right? That's a gambling strategy. <laughs> like you're, and there are surer bets than others. There are people who you know, incrementally make good amount of money using uh, pretty calm, routine stock market ideas. Uh, honestly, I think the stock market to me, I started to think about the stock market as a very evil tool once I realized that you can actually bet against things. Um, you are fundamentally just like betting on events to happen, right? Like during the, the, the housing crash, nobody believed that the housing market could collapse in the United States. No one believed that. Uh, with, a, with a very small uh, few exceptions. And those few exceptions were able to bet against the stock market. They were able to bet against the housing market so that when it collapsed, they were able to make a whole ton of money. <laughs> That's absurd. The whole narrative that we're put forward with the stock market is that uh, the stock market allows someone who has extra money or capital, which already itself is just accrued labor that they've probably stolen from someone else, they're able to take this capital, this accrued labor, and give it to someone else so that that other person may work for them in order to generate them more money. Uh, and that's the best case narrative, that I will take my excess money that did I earn? I could have been born into it. It's likely that I was. And I will give it to someone else and they will become my worker and they will work for me and I will do no work. My contribution was having the money. <laughs> but that's not really what the stock market's about. I mean, that's part of what the stock market's about, but it really is a casino and some of the things that happen inside of the stock market are so absurd and ridiculous uh, that to think you can be successful making lots of money doing certain activities is crazed and lunacy. Um, like if you're particularly good at buying and selling currencies, you can make an awful lot of money, but you're not doing anything of value right? Like you buy uh, the lira and sell it uh, for rupees and then sell it for American dollars. 
right? And if you do it right with the correct timing or the proper algorithm, you can make a lot of money. There are lots of people who have done it. They've, they're providing absolutely no value. It, it, it is strictly a manipulation of computer systems uh, in order to generate extra capital for themselves for doing nothing, nothing of value or purpose. So I have come to see the stock market as a gambling hall. It is a casino, first and foremost, almost strictly and exclusively. Recently, newspapers, uh, sorry, not newspapers, but uh, I have heard people like uh, uh, Crystal Ball and Sagar on the Hill say this internet meme, which is that the stock market is just rich people feelings. That if they're feeling uncertain about the future, then the price of people's stocks will decline. But if they're feeling more certain about the future, then the line will go up and stocks will have value. <laughs> and eventually how it works, right, is you have less and less players in the stock market. That's how capitalism works. It's, it is like a game of Monopoly, right? One person eventually starts to accrue more and more of the shares. The, the wise people, like I think that uh, the, one of the wisest billionaires in the mix is actually David Thompson, who's the richest Canadian. Uh, I think he's very wise because he doesn't really own much of anything um, directly, right? He owns lots of little bits of everything, right? He's got his hand in many different pies. Uh, but he, he really, he doesn't own a company, right? He's not a titan of industry, uh, this sort of Anne Rind delusional fantasy, right? Uh, he, he doesn't get in the spotlight very often. He doesn't make a lot of noise. He's very intelligent that way. I'm, I'm sure you don't really even know what he looks like, right? You know what Bill Gates looks like. Uh, but you have no idea what David Thompson looks like. He's the richest Canadian. He owns a part of everything. Uh, and so when it comes to, like, decisions or decision-making... He just hires somebody to do that for him, right? He doesn't need to actually make any decisions. He doesn't actually need to involve himself in any of that. And if you only own like 10 or 20% of a company, or even 5% of a company, then, you know, your interest in that company is not insane or ridiculous. And it's also a really smart strategy because if a company starts to collapse or it starts to go downhill and you only own like 20% of it, right? It's easier to get rid of that stock and it's not a huge blow to your overall portfolio. And this is all done through the stock market and the stock exchange. And so you have someone like David Thompson who, who really does produce nothing. Like he does no work. He was born a billionaire. He was born with incredible wealth. Uh, his official title is actually the third baron of fleet. He's a baron. <laughs> he's monarchy. Like, he's acknowledged monarchy. Uh, and he's the richest Canadian, and he maintains his wealth because he had a lot of wealth. And the reality is, is that once you attain a certain level of wealth, you can never lose it. Uh, and you can never lose it because you just spread it into the stock market in such a way that it will always be maintained. And everyone always ends up working for you. Well, you do nothing. You produce nothing. You produce no value. And so the stock exchange, in my view, is a capitalist tool to obfuscate uh, the relationship between the wealthy and the poor. The stock exchange exists exclusively to put a buffer between the rich and the poor, 
right? The rich can just own little bits of things. They don't really, they end up being quite faceless. You never actually meet them if you're working for one like or, or a, a group, right? If you're working for like an investor group, you never meet these people. They own you, right? But you never meet them. And their purchase or acquisition of your company uh, is exists up in this other tier that you never get to participate in. And the and they don't really announce that it's happening. Maybe like they'll they'll just say, "Oh yes, we're sold to this group," and and you're supposed to just move on with your life, and and you do, and then things start to change around you, and things kind of go sideways. Um, people get fired, people get laid off, there are mergers, acquisitions, all kinds of crazy nonsense. And you don't make a single decision about that. You don't have any input whatsoever. And that's all part and parcel of how the stock market works. That once you are publicly traded, you are opening yourself up to being owned by billionaires. And eventually, and because the stock market is dominated by billionaires, right? The, the labor market and the market that we exist in is completely dominated by billionaires. So we end up just being little properties for them to shuffle around. Like you're playing a game of Monopoly and like I'm Baltic. <laughs> you know, maybe you're Marvin Gardens. But at the end of the day, you're owned uh, by a cat. And it doesn't matter. You could be on Boardwalk, right? You could be running one of those hotels on Boardwalk, Right. You'd live in the fanciest neighborhood. You'd have the fanciest kind of stuff going on, but you're still owned, right? There's still an owner. And, and so the stock market is this incredible, sinister tool of obfuscation that doesn't really even uh, succeed at its most basic premise, which is that uh, an investor will invest in someone who doesn't have any capital in order to build a business and make money and all that kind of stuff. If it worked, we'd have much more successful businesses. <laughs> our, our businesses would be much more uh, stable than they are. Instead of, you know, streets that are completely shuttered and the, uh, because I can't get away from the, the like this whole argument of, of like, oh yeah, the wealth will trickle down. It'll trickle down because I'll invest in your business and then you'll work for me. I don't really understand as, why that's an, an, a positive that I'm supposed to work for a capitalist and that'll be great uh, <laughs> in the first place. But I can never get away from this line that I thought of like 10 years ago for why trickle down economics c cannot work. And it cannot work because... Why, if the point of investing is to make money, why would anyone invest if they already had all the money? <laughs> and so there's less and less of a pool of people who the capitalists can exploit in order to get their money from them, their labor from them. And as they start to hoover it all up and put it in their offshore accounts, there's less money to get. And as they exclude more and more people from the market, from the stock market, there are less and less players until eventually the whole system collapses because there are so few players or a singular player that they don't have anyone to trade with or play with anymore, that no one can actually afford the goods they're producing <laughs> because they don't have any money. <laughs> And so capitalism collapses in on itself. And the stock market is the primary, the primary, it's, it's, it's one of the like heads of the demon. <laughs> so yes, uh, beer drinker 86, I believe the stock market is evil and it should be abolished. We should be making decisions through conversation, through discussion, and through agreement as peers and equals not through some haphazard, chaotic system of money worship. All right, that's the end of me. Bye!